Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news and notes mashup video today, starting with a little bit of bad news from Jared Anderson. So he is off the Tyson Fury vs. Dillian White undercard. That fight happening in April. So saying on social media to all my fans and supporters, I would like to personally apologize because I will no longer be able to fight on the Fury vs. White undercard due to injury i rushed this camp and i now i have to go into hiding and will be back 10 times stronger yours truly the real big baby did you notice in that post as well sorry this is just something that picked, caught my eye every word was capped which must have taken so much longer to do that but that's by the by so anderson the right hand side upper right side commenting truly sorry but this is just a minor setback for the bigger picture guys bear with me and I think it's the right move. He's a young guy on the way up. He's been making waves. I believe he's the best heavyweight prospect coming through right now. And if he's not right, he's not right. And no need to go into a fight um, if you're not 100%. Or, you know, whatever injury, he, injury he's got, it's obviously sufficient enough where they've decided to pull the pin here because you know often guys are fighting with various you know injuries and little things that they'll carry but they'll push through it but this must be significant enough to the point where they don't want to risk it because you could always uh, injure yourself further etc and you don't want to go in there underdone and potentially uh, get upset so yeah it's disappointing but it is what it is Moving on, so I had to I had to laugh, and we'll get to this in a second. My uh, comments on this, but uh, so just re-reporting from uh, Michael Benson there we're via Fight Hype. Don King has stated that he is planning to go to court over the WBA's 55-45 purse split for Trevor Bryan versus Daniel Dubois. He already won the purse bids for the fight, which is for the WBA regular heavyweight belt, but he believes it should be 75-25 for his man. So first thing I want to do is my initial comment in my head when I read this was basically, and to quote Dillian White from February 2020, <laughs> just couldn't help but laugh to myself, entirely predictable. This was always going to happen. We knew the shenanigans would ensue once Don King won the purse, but it was just what was going to happen, how long. He's got history here. He's got form every time in the past couple of years where there's been anyone that's a half-decent opponent, there's been issues, whether it's been Mahmoud Char two years running with visa problems and not providing documentation as claimed by Char. Ultimately, Char didn't get the fight. We're just days from the purse bid having occurred, and there's already Don King threatening, or not threatening, saying he is going to go to court. So who knows what impact this could actually have on the fight itself. Perhaps it's going to be pushed back and given King and his history, that would be entirely predictable. This situation after Frank Warren lost the purse bid, if it's in Don King's hands, you're putting, you know, your fighter in his hands, putty in his hands, and there is going to be some shenanigans. And 75 for 20, uh, 25 for, for Trevor Bryan. He may be the so-called champion, but this is a secondary title. And Trevor Bryan, let's go back. So 2018, a vacant interim belt out of nowhere is put on the line when he fights a washed BJ Flores. After the 2020 shenanigans with Char, they draft in a washed Berman Stavern and Trevor Bryan takes that um, secondary WBA title. The guy hasn't earned this on merit. The guy doesn't deserve some massive split. And let's face it, out of the two, Daniel Dubois, in my view, got the higher profile. If they are going to stage it in London, which is uh, something that they could do and they have signaled could be a possibility June 18 in London, you know, Trevor Bryan, on his name alone, is not selling tickets, couldn't sell out a phone booth. I mean, you've seen some of these recent fights that he has had. They've been in tiny venues that haven't necessarily been packed. So, I mean, 75-25, is this really not so much for Bryan, but King wanting to get a bigger slice of the pie because he'll get a bigger cut? I would just assume that would be the case. Don King, notoriously greedy. I mean, make of it what you will. 
I just think it was entirely predictable. And uh, once you lose a person but to Don King, you're putting y- y- yourself and your fighter into his hands and you're going to have to play his games. So whether this, this fight goes ahead anytime soon, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But entirely predictable. Meanwhile, an update on the rematch for Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. So Eddie Hearn, speaking to media, said uh, they said they would make their decision, and this is their decision. He's going for it, and he's referring to Usyk. AJ's over the moon. He turned down a lot of money not to step aside, and then he might not have got the fight without any money. He just wants the fight, and he just wants to fight. I was at the UFC with him, and he was like, I just want to get in there. The only fight that really gets him going is the chance to beat Usyk again. Well, he'd have to beat him a first time for that again to be applicable. But he continues, I spoke with Alex last night. I'm assuming that's Alex Krasiuk. And we'll speak again tonight. The plan now is to start working on a June fight. We're doing it. It's a goer. So, you know, I think we just need to just sort of wait and watch a bit more water to flow under the bridge but the signs are good that the rematch is going to occur and at least in the next sort of three months or so which if it does happen good news so i guess we'll just have to wait for the announcement but i would expect eddie hearn will continue to uh, drop little nuggets like this consistently keep people interested you know just uh, eyes in the fight and talking about the fighters Meanwhile, all Joshua can do until something is confirmed is keep training, and he's been working with the Irish Southpaw, Thomas Carty. So you can see here Carty on the right, and actually a little bit of uh, shenanigans um, playing on a beam uh, noodles here. So Carty and jo- Joshua going at it. So Carty saying he got the best of the action with Joshua. Moving on, and this is a little bit sort of strange. So I don't know if Cash Ali is being serious. This is from his Instagram story. Or if there is something in this, but it seems to be sort of more of the category of bizarre and probably made up. But um, so he was commenting on a story that talked about um, if Joshua was going to have a step aside fight and uh, outrage about pay per view, uh, pay per view on his own, blah blah blah. So he says can't confirm nor deny. Although Dubai does seem to be the one now, though it's up to Joshua if he wants to get retired or not. We've done everything on our side. I'm still not sure how this got out. Is he being serious? Is he being serious that that was it ever actually on the table? Because, yeah, that's not a good fight for Anthony Joshua. At this point, Cash Ali is a light snack. And again, the internal reaction in my brain when I read this was the Dillian White laughter. <laughs> So I think we'll just file that away as uh, under the bizarre category because I don't think there's anything in that. And if there is, geez, that's a terrible fight. And even if they were to have an interim fight, why would they pick a guy who's orthodox? I mean, it doesn't make sense if they're going to try to prepare for a southpaw. Make of that what you will. Meanwhile, promoter Eddie Hearn says that if he can be in Dillian White's corner when he fights Tyson Fury, he'll try to be, saying, I don't think I'm allowed, but I was thinking about going into the corner and carrying the bucket. I would do that. I would put on a Dillian White t-shirt and carry the bucket in the corner. Wanting to get a part of it, apparently. Andy Ruiz Jr. has uh, asked his fans, would they like to see this fight? And you can see here it's a a mocked up graphic from his promotional company, Andy Ruiz Jr. Promotions, of him with Luis Ortiz. Now, this is a fight that's been talked about for some considerable time. Basically, the length of the pandemic. So a couple of years now. Ruiz initially said he needed a tune-up, and that tune-up was Chris Ariola, but he's been out of the ring so long now, it's almost a year. Does he need something else? But, I mean, if he's got to have it with Luis Ortiz, he's got to do it quickly because Ortiz is rotting on the vine, aging by the day. He didn't look great in that fight against Charles Martin, although he came back with a stoppage. He does look like he is, uh, certainly his days are numbered, but he's still got power, cannot be written off entirely. But you'd have to imagine if that fight occurs, Ruiz would be the favourite. But then again, you know, Ortiz with the power and Areola managing to put a dent in Andy Ruiz Jr. in their fight, Ortiz probably fancies it as well. So it's intriguing for a number of reasons, but come on, what's the delay? This could have happened six months ago, at least. 
it looks like Junior Far and Hemi Ahil will be making an appearance on the George Cambosis undercard if it is staged on June 5th. So you've got Doug Viney here who trains uh, Junior Far and also Hemi Ahil out of City Kickboxing in Auckland, New Zealand. So him saying uh, Junior Far, Hemi Ahil, June 5th Cambosis undercard. And as of this point in time, there is no fight card con uh, confirmed. There's talk about Devin Haney being the opponent, previously Vasil Lom Lomachenko. Obviously, they're looking at that date, June 5th in Australia, but remains to be seen. But Junior Far did actually, and this is a post from a couple of days ago, actually almost a week, uh, a post saying starting camp with a bang. At this point, unclear who Junior Far or Hemi Heel would fight. Both these guys are promoted by Lou DiBella. So that's how they would get a spot on the card because obviously DiBella is uh, the promoter for George Cambosis and would be the promoter of record for the event. So big opportunity for them if it does go ahead June 5th, if they are on the card, I guess TBC on opponents, but you know, nothing's confirmed more broadly for the card. So at least they're um, in camp and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing who they will be fighting against. A showcase opportunity. Far obviously having a loss against Joseph Parker hasn't been back in the ring since. And rounding out this heavyweight news and notes mashup video, you've got the unbeaten Australian prospect Joe Goodall. He's been added to the Tim Zhu and Gausha undercard that's on this weekend. So he says American debut, Sue Gausha undercard, 27 March. So 27 March, uh, that's um, Australian time, so I think it's uh, the night of the 26th in the US. But he is going to be facing uh, Matthew McKinney. So he's an 8, 4, and 2 journeyman. So Goodall of recent times has been in the United States, living in Las Vegas, training with Kevin Barry. So it'll be interesting to see him uh, and how he sort of looks and any improvements that they've been betting in with uh, Barry. And uh, Goodall talk that he is still going to be facing Justice Hooney later this year, but we shall see. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment, a loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.